Hi, this is Kimberly. Well, some people are mad at me because I'm not doing or saying what they want me to do or even thinking what they want me to think. And, and some people were shocked by my posting the three videos of the police cam footage, the body cam footage, and dash cam footage. The police shooting of Rashad Brooks. And I don't know why. I mean, yeah, it wasn't about piece of shit or christen shit or Delphi murders or it's body cam footage. I mean, we looked at a lot of it during the Chris Watts case. And no, we did not see anything violent in that body cam footage. And by that, I mean the Chris Watts body cam footage, not the one that I posted a couple days ago. But I thought it would be good to look at it and talk about it. What could have been done differently? What do we need to teach others? Uh, let's get a conversation going. Just, that's all. But moving along, the last Scannon video that I uploaded, I was told by somebody in the comments that since I was into sarcasm, that hey genius, Scannon doesn't come up in searches because he's a minor. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm not looking for his school records or proof of immunizations. I'm talking about a little boy that was murdered. So, hey dumbass, the reason Gannon doesn't come up in the searches is because he's not being tagged in the video or the article, news story, shit like that. Give me a break. Go to hell. You know what? Just, I want all of the dumb fucks to just go the hell away. Piss off. The other thing I wanted to mention, or get back to, I mean, a handful of subscribers were all up in arms just because I posted three videos of the Atlanta police shooting of Richard Brooks. And I do have some of the Wendy's security cam that I've not posted yet, and a couple of interviews that I wanted to put together in one post, just as soon as I figure out which of the clips are causing me grief and not allowing me to save all of them as one video. Yeah, I just love the damn guessing game with this shit, with these programs. Why don't they tell you what the hell is wrong with them? For example, this clip is corrupt. Please delete it. I feel like I'm getting the silent treatment from software. That's one of the meanest things you can do to someone is silent treatment. But I just want to say I will post whatever the devil I want to post on my channel. Facts are facts. It's all there to make your own judgment, develop your own point of view, your position, your belief, whatever your desire to name it. We're all, not all going to agree on this. Some like to share their thoughts and others like to keep it to themselves. How you interpret these videos that I posted, it's your business. And I'm not going to tell you if it's wrong or right if you choose to post your thoughts. Some I agree with and some I don't. So what? Does it matter what my opinion is? I want to encourage conversation. That's what we need is more conversation, not more finger pointing and all that shit. But God almighty, son, is Kimberly going to have to turn off the comments or something? There was no cryptic message behind my posting these videos. It's a current event. It's a very important current event. We have to learn to communicate better. I think I communicate very well. Well, I talk a lot, so <laughs> it is your judgment if I communicate well or not. There. And the same goes for all of the viewers that come to my channel to view what I have posted. Some are going to agree with what I posted and some not. You don't have to get nasty. Express and exchange your view. Share what you deem to be fair and or unfair. It depends on who you ask. We can all look at this and have a totally different opinion. And you don't have to get pissed off just because someone's not seeing it the way you see it. You can get pissed off if they're rude to you. Go ahead, cuss them out if you feel that you have been wronged in the comments. And I do try to hide or delete things that are over the top. So, when your opinion is presented in a congenial manner, I listen. Sometimes, I even change my mind. 
I change it to your view or a portion of your view if you've convinced me. It's not that I'm being wishy-washy. I ponder probably why I have insomnia, but I want you to make yourself at home on this channel. But I will be the only person vocally attacking someone, and when I am, it's going to be someone that has confessed to murder, or that has been arrested for murder, or convicted of murder. And you are free to go off in the comments about said murderer. Some of you have made yourselves just a little too comfortable throwing ignorant comments around like dirty smelly socks. I'm not going to have that. It won't happen again because if you do that shit, you're officially blocked or hidden from this channel for not picking up your smelly socks and getting the odor out of here. It's okay to be a little bit or somewhat ignorant. You know, we're all lifelong learners, but if you came here to fight and make a mess, no, I'm not putting up with that shit. I am generally a pleasant person. Can't you hear it in my fucking voice? And then they tell me I have anger issues. No, I don't. I'm the happiest goddamn person I know. But my manner and attitude can drastically change in a second, like zero to 60, if you're an asshole. You shouldn't even have to be told this shit by now if you're familiar with my channel. We don't like it when people misbehave in the comments. And we refers to me and my people. We all stand in solidarity, even when we have differing opinions. Some of us have arms linked like peaceful protesters do. Others want to walk by themselves, probably because they're either a loner or they're still social distancing, as we all should be. Or stay at home. I don't like hollering. I don't like when people argue. Only hollering I like is me or my grandma. May her beautiful soul rest in peace. And I will go out on a limb here and some of you will shake the tree that I'm hanging on to. But I'm going to say out loud that it is my opinion that every single one of these police shootings are different. They have different circumstances. It is not a one-size-fits-all approach or solution. It, every time or however the officer kills, it's not the same. The solutions are available in a variety of sizes. Now, if only we can all come together and collaborate so that we can custom fit each difficult issue as it presents itself. Study each case independently. Where did it go wrong? What can we do differently? How should we handle this next time? What kind of training should we offer to the police officers? I'm not going to say much more than that. I've already been ripped a new one. Thank you very much. Been verbally roasted and mooned in the comments, but since this video deals with Lapisa bitch, it's going to be seen mostly by sub, so I think some of the ugly comments that I had to delete earlier are not going to be frequenting this video or even my channel. And those of you that unsubscribed and made sure to tell me, you're going to miss me. You'll probably be back if you're not back already. Thanks. I'm very flattered. Glad to have you here again. I love y'all, even the ones that are pissed off at me right now. And just know, all of the assholes have left the building. Thank you, and have a sunshiny day. Much obliged. And I would like to extend a warm thanks. I am extremely grateful. Thank you for your attention. I offer my most sincerest thanks. I would like to thank the Academy. I'm totally into you. Much love and much peace. And now for a missing part that should have gone with January 10th on the last Ganestalk video. I knew this was missing. I couldn't find it and I had myself so confused and I finally just gave the fuck up and said never mind then. But now today I found it so I'm just going to add it to this video. Thank you. We were talking about, well first of all, how does piece of shit keep herself from asphyxiating on all of her bullshit? 
But line 168 of the arrest affidavit, we were talking about Quincy Brown. So Quincy Brown, age 37, was listed on the El Paso County's most wanted list on February 10, 2020. The affidavit says, I was able to locate Brown's photo on KKTV News website where they describe Brown as a black male. It is noted that during one of Letitia's stories, she described her rapist as being a Hispanic male. The photo on the website appeared to be the same photo piece of shit sent to Mr. Stouck. Brown had outstanding warrants for failure to register as a sox offender and failure to appear. These warrants appear to have been open since 2018. So, I went on, um, I was explaining what a sox offender was. And to clarify, sox is sex offender registry. Well, wasn't that convenient? All she had to do was look up and pick out somebody from the internet. Hmm. D did she think she was the only one that knows how to use the internet? Probably. She's, you know, we all know she's out there. It's okay. We can talk about it now. Now that she is going to seek evaluation for her mental health. Line 169 of the arrest affidavit says, I was able to find a criminal history for Quincy Brown. Date of birth, 10-21-1981, which included, but was not limited to, a 2001 arrest for first-degree kidnapping in El Paso County, which was pled to felony menacing. Investigators have uncovered no evidence to support that Quincy Brown was involved in Gannon's disappearance. Story number two, she was raped by Quincy Quincy Brown at her residence and Brown abducted Gannon. She knew Brown's identity because she saw a paper and his identification card fall out of his pocket and that had his name on it. Piece of shit sent a photograph of Quincy Brown to Mr. Stouck via text message. It is noted this is photograph mirrored, but she sent a photograph image online wherein Quincy Brown was listed as a most wanted suspect discuss below. Story number three. Quincy Brown followed her from Petco and at some point was laying in the middle of the road in front of her car. How did he know where she was going to get right up on her so he could lay in the middle of the road? He might have psychic powers or something. I, I don't know. When piece of shit stopped to avoid running the man over, he jumped into her car and made her take him home, then raped her. Her home or his home? Story number four. Piece of shit and Gannon were near County Line Road and Highway 10 South in northern El Paso County on January 27, 2020. Gannon was riding a bicycle in that area and fell off, hit his head, and then was abducted by aliens. I, I mean by Mr. Quincy Brown. I get it. So this is why when they were doing their searches and shit, they found Gannon's blood at this particular spot. But do people really do that on their way back from a Petco that's like 40 miles away from their house where they drove past six other Petcos, but they just stop in the middle of the road and let their child out to ride their bicycle who stayed home due to a very bad upset stomach that could possibly cause him embarrassment at school. Uh, okay, and as if things weren't bad enough, a man named Terrence drove by with a passenger named Quincy Jones who is on the most wanted list, but they stopped probably under the ruse of helping Gannon, but then they kidnapped him. My God, that's horrible. No wonder she went home and waited several hours to call the police. And on this date, February 10th, 2020, is when Chad T's babysitter did the now famous interview with the news. Everyone was getting their 15 minutes of fame. I can't talk about her again. I did an in-depth on her in a different video. You remember, she said, it's all mind blowing and I can't, I just can't hear her say that again. But this is the part that I left the fuck out of the previous video, so my bad. I had myself so damn confused that I was going to quit YouTube. I'm like, fuck this shit. And then I found out I was just overtired again. So I slammed off to bed and got a good night's sleep. So next, we're going to, oh, we're going to do something fun. Hang on a second, okay?
go and get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or an adult beverage or something like that. Meet me back here in three seconds. Okay, I'm back. I found some screenshots of, I don't know if they were posts on Facebook or if it was uh, texted to someone, but this is one of those instances where it was believed that this person was actually tea bag, flea bag, piece of bitch, piece of shit. You know who I'm talking about. So I'm going to read this to you because I believe she is pretending to be a friend of piece of shit. And please forgive me, I know I have said in the past that I'm not one to gossip. However, I'm not perfect. Please don't expect that from me. You will be sorely disappointed. Thank you. But hey, I know, we'll call this investigative journalism. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So I'll show the screenshot so you can follow along. Cabin Life at Eden Springs. This must be a screen name or something. I do not believe she had a rap sheet. I think it's just rumors. People can be so cruel. The stepmother has a PhD and is a teacher. She and the birth father moved to Colorado on a military move, so she had to leave her job. Pretty much has been a full-time mother to her stepchildren. I find it very interesting that for two years this family has lived in Colorado and everyone appears to be fine with the care she has provided the children. The biological mother lived 2,000 miles away, so I think the public needs a person to pin this to just to make themselves feel better. Plus, I know how many children go missing. Child abduction is rampant, I think she meant to say. Plus, there's another case that could be potentially along the same lines as this one. So I believe we will see more, a lot more. I think the stepmother was tired of not being appreciated by her husband for the care she provided his children. Wow, okay, this is definitely her. <laughs> But murder? No. She might have been aggravated with Gannon. I understand. I cared for my father-in-law until he passed away. I'm just going to correct the misspellings as I see them, or the autocorrects, so everything flows and shit. And he drove me crazy, but I love him. I miss him very much, and I could have never hurt him. Never, ever, ever. That didn't keep my sister-in-law, who flat out told her father, quote, Do not call me. I do not want you to even have my phone number. I don't have time for you, end quote. It broke his heart. His own daughter treated him like that. He lived with my husband, his son, and me over a year. We cared for him like he was our own child because he was so sick. But as soon as he passed, the sister-in-law goes right up to my husband in front of the casket, wanting her part of the estate. She also called me things I could not even repeat. It's bad. Really bad. So, I know how horrible people can be. And right now the public is being horrible to the stepmother because they need the scapegoats. My husband and I are very impressed with your reading abilities. God bless you, Leslie. And then another one, Undisputed Truth. Please read this. Hey there, I was hoping you were going to do more on Gannon. It's about to come out that the biological mother had the children removed from her care. Gannon and his sister were in a horrible situation, and the stepmother fought for the children for seven years. So that means Gannon was age four when the stepmother fought to save those babies biological mother apparently was living in her cars, dragging the kids to nasty hotel rooms and putting them in unsafe situations involving drugs and unsavory folks. I'm waiting to see what all comes out, but I know that if an attorney at Littnam investigates you and allows your children to be living in your care, then you are a good, upstanding person. And if an attorney at Littnam investigates a biological mother and has the children removed from her care, then she is unfit. I have a lot of things going through my mind, different scenarios. I do know that when a woman fights for a four-year-old, and for years for that child, they set their own needs and desires aside to provide care for the child or children, then they love them very much. 
I think when the stepmother says Ganon is alive and we will find Ganon, it's because she can't imagine that he is in harm's way. Plus, it means she failed Ganon and that's the last thing she wanted. I want to know if you have seen the video of Ganon where he was upset over knocking over a candle and causing damage to the home. The stepmother was very kind to him in the video. Is she fucking kidding? That was the day before he went missing, saying that they will work together. Stepmother and Gannon to resolve the problems. I think that if a child is age four, they might be able to remember the terrible situation his biological mother had him in. Maybe he saw things on his visits with her that worries him. The stepmother said they cried at Garden of the Gods. She said because of the helicopter crash with Kobe Bryant. But what if the stepmother is telling Gannon, I'm leaving your father? They cry and Gannon makes her promise not to let him end up with the biological mother or with the father because he might have a temper and because she has loved him as her own and fought for him most of his life. She made sure he was sent to a place where he would not be harmed. Okay, those are only a few things going on in my mind. I felt I should tell you about the issues with the biological mother because she was found to be unfit. Even though the father and the stepmother allowed him to have a relationship with her, it was done at a distance. I also picked up on the fact that Gannon's father was going to be extremely mad at Gannon over the burned carpet. Could Gannon's father have spanked him and lost it? Could Gannon have been protected? from not only the unfit biological mother, but a father who has a violent streak. God bless you, sweet lady. I think you are extremely gifted, Leslie. And I have no clue who the fuck Leslie is. Here someone said they're talking about the video that Piece of Shit claims accidentally filmed that Sunday night, the one where Gannon is crying, and it says T. Stalk, stepmom of Gannon, leaked video. She also posted pictures talking about bath salts and badmouthing the birth mom, as well as a custody agreement from 2018. And that will be all for this short video. I'm going to wrap it up here and in the next video I will pick it up with the Gannon Stalk timeline January 11th. I'm also going to do another video on the Rashad Brooks case, the one that I said I was working on. There's a statement from his cousin that I wanted to show you and just a couple of other things. Much love and peace. Thank you for listening.